Hi, I'm Ruth. And I'm Brenton, and welcome to Spectrum Today. Looking forward to sharing with you. I have a great couple of guests with us, Ruth, as we're going to be talking to two wonderful young ladies from Christmas Joy, and uh, that is something special in Albuquerque, a presentation we'll be talking about a little bit later in the program. That's great. Well, it is getting to be the season of the year where we're entering into holidays, and Thanksgiving is around the corner. Christmas is coming up. <laughs> we're past all of the election yeah. stuff. Now we can move on. I guess there's still well, a few there's reports still a, coming in. a little bit of election things hanging out there, but we're getting there. Right. But we're going to move on to the, the topics at hand being Thanksgiving. We'll talk about holidays. We're talking about holidays. I yeah. kind of feel like I'm behind because so many of my friends and some family already have their Christmas trees up. Wow. And I almost did it over the weekend. Yep. But then I was like, hmm. Decided so against I, it. Yeah, I didn't do it, but it, we, doesn't it feel like it comes sooner and sooner? And also, I, I feel like I'm a little bit behind for that reason. I, I guess so. You know, the other thing that's interesting is I've noticed that a lot of the Black Friday pre-sales are already in motion. Oh, yes. If you are not getting your Black Friday shopping done early, you may miss out on certain special things that are there. And I think it's the same thing with the turkeys that we're going to be talking about today. You've got to be on it and get them as soon as you can because of the sh shortage. Well, let's jump into that. The reality is that turkey prices this year are going to be up significantly. In New Mexico. You, mm -hmm. Yeah, here in Albuquerque, here in the New Mexico area. So we're being told by folks who are in the turkey biz that you must plan ahead and go and get your turkey probably now. If you don't mm -hmm. buy it a week or two in advance, there is a great chance they will flat out not have enough turkeys this year. Mm -hmm. And the reason is kind of interesting. Mm -hmm. One of the reasons it, that turkeys are so much higher is they don't have enough workers on the farms. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we hear... Isn't that we, interesting? Yes. Yeah, you think about the fact that you're seeing shortages in restaurants and shortages in you know, retail and shortages here and there, child care. But apparently the the farmers, the turkey farmers are having the same struggle. And this is coming from someone who says it's, uh, they ordered the same amount of turkeys as they did last year, uh -huh. but the price is 33% higher. Ooh, wow. Because of that. You know, and, and I, okay, I am going to just say, I have not been a turkey expert pricing turkeys <laughs> and comparing them to last year. But doesn't it seem like, Everything is a yes. lot more expensive. Yes. Now, here's another interesting tidbit. Go ahead. Well, you go ahead. I was just going to chime in and say, I wonder if the price, okay, you have your turkey, and sometimes we have it, you have it prepared for, so we have it smoked. Oh, yeah. I wonder if, the, if that's going to affect everything, too, like, like the, the prices of having it done, uh, prepared for you. Yeah. Everything is going to be higher. Well, here's another reason that they, they're telling us turkeys are higher. The feed to feed the turkeys has gone up. Mm -mm. So not only oh do they my. not have enough uh, workers on the turkey farm, okay, they also are having to pay more to feed the turkeys to fatten those little fellas up so that they oh are my. ready for, for uh, Thanksgiving. So, yeah. I mean, it's just kind of a, a compound. Okay, problem. so what that reminds me of is a story of a family of, a fa of our family, some family of our family, if that makes sense to you, who raised their own turkey. Uh-huh. And so they knew what they fed it, so they they know what the turkey had. Sure, that it was huge turkey, and that's what they're having for Thanksgiving. I, like, being an animal lover, I don't think I could do that. Uh, okay, so you say, Ruth, you have turkey for Thanksgiving anyway, but to have raised that turkey and known that turkey, <laughs> yeah, and named and that, fed turkey, that turkey, and you name the turkey, uh, and then you send it off. It personalizes and you, your meal a lot more. You would take more selfie you with that turkey before it heads off. So mm, that's, sad. That's I just, but they, they will have turkey. There you go. Well, They're going to have that, a turkey for Thanksgiving. <laughs> okay. Going into travel because yes. the next thing that's a big deal of this time of year is of course, for people to get Lights. ready to, to fly or right. drive or go see grandma or mom and dad or whoever it is. Yes. Here's the problem. Again, there is almost shocking numbers in the, if you have not booked early to get mm -hmm. your plane uh, fare because there are fewer flights available than there were uh, back in, like say, 2019. So there's uh, a reduction in the number of flights that are going about. And you should expect that if you have not prepared, boy, not only will that flight be more expensive, but it's likely that lodging could be really high. 
And something you can consider, which is what uh, we read, was that consider the day of the week that you fly. So a Sunday is going to cost less than a weekday. See, I've always wondered, what's the best day to fly? Well, it says that Sunday is the best day to fly. Also, the time of your flight affects everything. So it can it gets worse as the day progresses. So the earlier you have the flight, the better chance you're going to have to get to your destination without many delays. Well, I'd agree with that. And the, so the later in the day you go, the more chance of a delay you have. Okay. And also, something else that affects it is we often want to get there a little earlier, come home. It just depends. So they're saying that the best day or with the best flights would it be Christmas Eve or New Year's Eve. But who wants to fly on Christmas or New Year's Eve? Well, the unless you're is... unless you're going to your destination on Christmas Eve, not returning, obviously. So no, you're no, going I or yeah. But, but but most people want to be there prior, right? They want to be there, settle in, be with the family for all the Christmas Eve events, not get there barely at the airport. Well, it depends. And if you fly happens, early in the day, then you're there early. What happens if you have a snag and then you get then you and they're also the saying uh, you might consider the uh, airport you fly into. So you're not going to go to a major airport, maybe a smaller one, but you will have more delays with a smaller one. And their schedule is not going to be as flexible mm. as with a larger, larger airport. Good news. We could use a little bit of good news in this. Car rentals are not as bad as they were right. in 2021. So you should be able to yes. get a car a little more easily. They also and, talked about flights or, or airlines taking larger planes. Mm to accommodate less flights, but larger planes. Okay, but then if you, okay, well, hey, it's just, that's what's out there. Here's something else that's happening, and this is happening in a lot of our larger cities, but this story is specifically centered in Massachusetts, where they're fussing at the folks at Walgreens and complaining that they are being, uh, they're being accused of racism for closing some of their stores. So I believe it's three of their locations. In, Bo in the Boston area, right? Mm -hmm. These are primarily black and Hispanic neighborhoods. Mm -hmm. Now, people are, uh, you know, uh, people are concerned because a lot of the folks in that area don't have access to maybe driving. So right. they have to walk or mm -hmm. have easy access to the, the local mm -hmm. stores and those stores are vacating. Mm -hmm. However, we actually had a uh, family member who was telling us, and this was yeah, within was the last Walgreens, year, right. he, you know, he was a manager right. of a Walgreens store in a large metropolitan area mm -hmm. and described to us the amount of theft that they were yes. having, the problem they were having keeping the store staffed mm -hmm. because fast food places down the road were mm -hmm. paying more <clears throat> exactly. in his specific area than they were able to pay right. at the Walgreens. I am not surprised that we are seeing some of these retailers in larger cities saying, we just can't make it happen, especially with that. We've been inside of Walgreens stores and literally seen people stealing, walking out with huge amounts of merchandise. Right. And, they, and they're instructed not to do anything about it. Of course, you want to be safe. And that's the first thing they tell you. Your life is more important than the merchandise sure. you're stealing. Um, they talked about the rate, uh, the average rate of an employee at one of the locations that they're talking about closing was 14 25 an hour. Okay. It seems like it'd be pretty good, but you yes. know what? You're seeing a lot of places advertising for a lot more than mm -hmm. that. It just, they, I guess they can't keep up. So what, what will, some, what will the, the people in that area do now? The, they're left with nothing often. I mean, you know, I don't know. I don't know the neighborhoods in those Massachusetts neighborhoods, but, but if, you know, you can imagine if that is like your main store and they were to close up, you're in a tough spot. Yeah. That's a difficult thing. Okay. There's another one that we want to look at, and this one is dealing with layoffs that are beginning to to ripple into our economy, there is fear, of course, of a recession in 2023. Maybe that won't happen. We don't want it to happen, but that's hard on all of us. But we are seeing that Amazon mm -hmm. is uh, saying that they are planning on laying off 10,000 employees, which would be 3% of their uh, corporate employees. And I think it's like 1% of their worldwide workforce. Right. Yes. Not a huge amount, but that is saying that mm -hmm. there are they're, some problems afoot. They're feeling it too, yes. Wow. You were telling me right before we uh, came on that you know you kind of like the fact that Amazon seems to get their stuff there on time. <laughs> they do. They have it there within a few days, so I hope it doesn't affect that too much. Okay, that brings you up to speed on a few items. We'll be back in a minute. Watch the Daystar Network 24 hours a day on KAZQ 32.5.
Well, we're coming to the last about month and a half of 2022, and I want to present a need that we have here at Alpha Omega Broadcasting. You know, we are uh, completing this year. We've been working diligently to pay for the cameras that we've talked about all year long. And to be blunt, we are not there. Uh, we, we have uh, raised money all throughout 2022 and are still several thousand dollars short of being able to pay for the cameras that we uh, needed and purchased as we uh, started the year. Some of those items we didn't even think would be available, mm -hmm. even though we had to, to place orders until like October. Uh, but we were able to get a hold of some of them early. But, you know, that was about a $30,000 expenditure. And we're significantly short. To be honest with you, we have some other areas of real need. We need to raise in the next 45 days $15,000 to pay for some of these expenses. Uh, some of them unexpected. Some of them just to pay off some of these equipment items that we went ahead and purchased. Your donations to the President's Club of $50, $75, and $100. And, and we've been saying, hey, if you can kick it up during this 35th anniversary mm -hmm. year to maybe a $350 a month donation, maybe one time. Boy, that would significantly help us. We really are starting to have some significant pressures because of these equipment expenses. Sure, and we would ask you to, to consider being a partner, not only a one-time donation or a one-time giver, but a partner of Alpha Omega Broadcasting. And Alpha Omega Broadcasting is such a blessing. It is a blessing to have something that you can watch on TV that's not going to uh, pop up and offend you or it's going to be offensive to anyone out there. We want to do the best we can and come across clearly and with excellence. And so your donations and your partnerships help that happen. Visit us online at kazq32.org to give safely. You can call into the station as well, 505-884-8355, extension 101, or simply mail in that donation to Alpha Omega Broadcasting at 4501 Montgomery Boulevard Northeast, Albuquerque, New Mexico, 87109. If you'd like to stay with us, connected with us digitally, please email your information to info, info at kazq32.org. Watch Jimmy Swagger and the Sun Life Network 24 hours a day on KAZQ 32.3. pleased to have with us today two wonderful ladies from Christmas Joy, a wonderful event here in our city we're going to learn a little bit about today. Lindsay Warner, who's the artistic director, and also Rachel Friedrich, who is one of the dancers. Excited to have them both with us. Ladies, thanks for coming and sharing today. Thanks for Thank having you. us. Well, we're looking forward to learning as we're getting closer to the holidays about some of the events that are available in the Albuquerque area. Why don't we start by uh, just kind of bringing people up to speed about what is Christmas Joy? and give us the history. Why don't you start us off today? Yeah, sure. Um, so Christmas Joy is a dance production that essentially shares you know, the true story of Christmas, the birth of Christ, um, through dance. And so we are part of Magnified Dance Ensemble, which was originally the Performers Ballet and Jazz Company. And so this company was founded in 1981. Wow. Yeah, so we just that celebrated. It does it? Yes, it does. <laughs> so we just celebrated 40 years of being an organization, which is pretty incredible. Um, so our founder, Karen Alwyn, founded the company in 1981. And then herself alongside um, Lynn Crawford Cox, they started Christmas Joy in 1984. Wow. And so Christmas Joy is in its 38th year of say, production. Nearly 40 years. Yes. It was, it was, did you guys amazing. go all the way through uh, COVID? Did you have presentations in? We had one year off okay. during COVID. We actually prepared. We prepared a show that year and then were able to perform. Oh, what a um, so, you know, we kind of count that because we put the work in. Sure. Um, but yeah, other than that, we've been going for 38 years straight. Well, what's the mission, Lindsay, of the, mm -hmm. of the show? What, what's it all about? Yeah, so the company was founded with the, the mission of providing excellent pre-professional training and performance opportunities for young dancers. And so we're continuing that now. Um, but the mission of the show is really just to share that gospel story, um, to give opportunity for us to, you know, worship the Lord and glorify Him through our movement mm -hmm. um, 
in a way that, you know, is really unique. There's not a lot of shows that do that. Now, you say it's a dance show, so tell mm -hmm. us what kind, you know? I mean, all type, sorts, all yes. sorts of dances. <laughs> so our, our company is primarily classical ballet. Okay. Um, that's our foundation. But our dancers are also trained in contemporary and jazz. They do a little bit of hip-hop even. Wow. So we've got a really broad spectrum of, um, you know, types of dance that we showcase. So Rachel, you have uh, been in the program. Is this your first year or you've been in it a while? Tell us about your participation with Christmas Joy. This is coming up on my 12th year of Christmas Joy. So you're a veteran. I am. <laughs> <laughs> you're pretty young to be a veteran of the dance troupe, but you're yeah. nonetheless you are. Okay. So what's it been uh, like for you to kind of move through different stages of working on a program for 12 years? I think it's just impacted my life in so many different ways. Um, it's it's built mentorship relationships like Lindsay um, that just got me through like tough times, tough seasons. Um, built relationships with friends, um, lifelong relationships. I think it also um, just provided me not only with the earthly relationships but with a heavenly relationship with God. And I think there's something so um, special about sharing the gospel in a way that um, just that you're so passionate about that like brings a really deep relationship well, with God. You know, a lot of young uh, young people, teenagers, because mm -hmm. uh, a lot of your, your dancers are teens, correct? Yes, correct. And, and even younger. Yes. You know, the, you're, you're kind of going after those things in high school and, and your early uh, young adult years that are really passionate to you that, that, are, that are fun. Now, some people approach that with sports. Mm -hmm. But in the case of the folks with Christmas Joy, I suppose that's through dance, isn't yes. it? Yes. Yeah. And that gives you a real outlet because not there's not as many maybe – dance opportunities? I don't know. Okay. Is this a, a big opportunity in the city compared to maybe some other things? Yes. Is yeah. it? Okay. Yeah, yeah I, w I would think it is. Yeah. I've, I've gone a couple times and it's it's pretty and impressive. I, I do want to ask you, Rachel, what's kind of your favorite thing that you've been involved with? Because if you've done this for 12 years, right. you've probably had at least one or two experiences you say, that was that was awesome. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. um, I think performing, there's nothing like it. The, the performance is just Something, again, that I'm so passionate about and just to share that love with an audience, it's just, there's nothing like it. But then after the performance, we, we do the finale, we go off stage and we go to the atrium and people will start coming up to you and telling you their story and how you impacted them. And it's just, it's so special. It's, it's a blessing because they'll just come up to you and tell you that they, you impacted them and it's life changing. That's encouraging, honestly. isn't it? Yeah. I mean, we don't get too many encouraging uh, opportunities every day, so it's great to have one that right. they can uh, really uh, inspire and continue keeping us motivated. Mm -hmm. Now, Lindsay, as as you think about being the artistic yeah. director, uh, what are some of the responsibilities that that fall on you? Yeah. So, as one of the artistic directors, there's two of us leading okay. the show this year. Um, we're in charge of casting, and so we casted the whole show. Um, and set everybody in their roles. Are there tryouts, or how does that there work? There are. Okay. Yes, we hold an audition every spring. Audition. And then, There's the word. Yes. <laughs> and so from that point, you know, we're continuing to watch the dancers, and then by August, we've had the show cast. So we've been rehearsing since August. Um, and so we casted the show. We do all the scheduling, make sure that everybody gets enough rehearsal, and then, you know, just a, a lot of the – just administrative things that come with it, making sure everybody knows their jobs, everybody's Nothing informed. Nothing happens without keeping people, you know, kind of lined out yeah. and coordinated. <laughs> so your job yes. is different. So what's mm -hmm. kind of the, the favorite part of yours and what's the, if, if we can dare ask, what's the thing you dread? <laughs> well, this is a new role for me, so I'm still figuring out all of those things. I think Rachel touched on something that is very important to the heart of our company, which is mentorship. Okay. And so, you know, we have young dancers from age six all the way up to our advanced, you know, upper high school dancers. And so we really um, value the mentorship that comes along with that um, in the dancers. And so I think um, as a director, I also really value just that mentorship role and being able to, you know, have relationships with these dancers and these young women that um, I really care about, and that's probably one of my favorite parts. So who should come to see Christmas Joy? Christmas Joy comes in the month of December. It does. Give us the dates. Yes, so we will be performing on December 10th and 11th. Okay, is It's that, a Saturday and a Sunday. That's what I was going to ask. Yes, so we have a matinee performance on each day at 2 p.m., and then we have a Saturday evening performance as well at 6.30. Wow. And so we have those three shows. And really, the show is for everyone. Anybody that wants to 
um, you know, be you kids inspired. Come? Yeah, we have kids. We have kids that come. And I think that it's special for them to see, you know, peers their own age up on the stage as well. Um, and so kids all the way up to adults, it's really a show for everybody. Have you ever had uh, some of the kids that come and watch and then they, they get involved with a, the dance company because they say, yeah. I want to do that next, yes. next year? Yes. yes, that's actually a pretty common thing. Yes. Um, Is it really? Yep, that's my, how I joined the that's company. That's how Rachel joined. Really? Yes. Yeah. We have Parents many brought you along? Like yes. Yeah. And then you said, that's for me. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. That's great. All right. So where is the event going to be held? You said it's the 11th and 12th of December, a Saturday and yes. Sunday, and two matinees, one evening event. Yeah. Uh, where is it going to be killed? It's going to be at the National Hispanic Cultural Center. Beautiful venue. Yes, gorgeous. So well, that's great. So can there. you get your tickets now, or do you have to wait? Do you have to get them at the door? How does it play out? Tickets, you can get your tickets now, and we're, we're selling tickets pretty well, so I would recommend Wonderful. getting them soon, yeah. So we can um, you can either go to NHCC directly through their website or by phone, or through our website, magnifiedancecenter.com. Okay. Now, if, you, if someone is watching today and they said, you know what, I, I've already been to Christmas Joy X number of years ago, mm -hmm. why should I go again? Is anything going to be new? Is anything going to be different? Certainly the dancers change, but yes. does the program change? Yes, the dancers change, the program changes as well. We really fit the the repertoire of, you know, the show each year to the specific cast of dancers that we have. So every single year you're going to get a different production, um, which is kind of fun. I think it keeps it fresh for our audiences. We have audience favorites, you know, those pieces that we right. keep, but we're bringing back some some other old favorites as well this year. You have a slogan attached called Experience the Miracle. Mm -hmm. Lindsay, what does it mean to experience the miracle? Experience the miracle really just goes with that, um, you know, the hope that we're we're sharing the gospel, the miracle of Jesus coming, you know, to earth and, you know, just sharing that through dance. So I think sharing it through dance is a different way to experience the miracle that is Christmas. Rachel, as you think about all the busy things that Christmas has and is a part of it, how do you fit this into your schedule? It, it's, it can be difficult at times, but I think it, just making it a priority because it is so important to myself with my relationships with people, God, and for other people, um, it's really important. It changes lives. That's great. Well, this is a special event, and it's something that happens annually around Christmas time. This year, the 11th and 12th of December, at it's going to be at the Hispanic Natural or the National Hispanic, National Cultural, Hispanic Center. Cultural Center. You got to get all those words in the right order. Mm -hmm. And give us the website one more time. You remember the web address where people can go to look for tickets? So the website you can go to magnifiedancecenter.com. Great. Or to the NHCC website. All right. Well. It's time to, to think about that. Christmas will be here before you know it, and you don't want to miss out on Christmas joy. Ladies, thanks for sharing with us today. Thanks, thanks for having us. So Approaching Thanksgiving, it's important for us to, to really start working on thinking thoughts of thankfulness. Uh, it, that's not an easy thing to do because we do live in some challenging times. I, I don't think there's really anybody who would tell you that times are easy. I mean, things are pretty challenging at one state or another. So let's read about someone in scripture who really faced some hard times but made some better choices. And it's the, the account, part of the account of King Jehoshaphat, 2 Chronicles chapter 20. Why don't we just read the first three verses to get us started and set the scene? Sure. After this, the Moabites and Ammonites with some of the Meunites came to wage war against Jehoshaphat. Some people came and told Jehoshaphat, a vast army is coming against you from Edom, from the other side of the Dead Sea. It is already in Hazazon Tamar, that is, in Gedi. Alarmed, Jehoshaphat resolved to inquire of the Lord, and he proclaimed a fast for all Judah. That's interesting that the passage Ruth starts by saying, after this. What were some of the after this? Well, we know that Jehoshaphat was connected in marriage to the house of Ahab, and he'd gone to battle with Ahab, and he'd almost gotten killed, and God rebuked him at the beginning of chapter 19, saying, why are you, uh, through a prophet, saying, why are you helping the ungodly? Uh, you, you know, that, that's not something you should be doing. Mm -hmm. And uh, he begins to, to try to really work in, in the country of Judah to help the people understand God's truth. He accepted the rebuke and he began to work through it. But he 
has another problem after this. And you know, one of the things that Satan does to any of us mm -hmm. is when we have a problem, he says, you know, those things that you did, he reminds us of is our past, doesn't mm -hmm. he? Yes. And it's easy for us to listen to the, the doubts and the skepticism that Satan would bring. But you know, Jehoshaphat makes a decision to really seek for and listen to God because it says he was resolved, third verse, to inquire of the Lord. Right? He decided, I need to hear what God has to say. You know, if you're going to have a thankful heart, you need to hear what God has to say about situations. That's good. Sometimes our reaction when we're alarmed, that verse 3 really stands out to me because it's this alarmed Jehoshaphat uh, resolved to inquire of the Lord is what my version mm -hmm. says. And sometimes we're, we're alarmed and what do we do? We, we panic and we instead listen of to, praying. And we listen right. to our own fears. Yes. Or we listen to other people's negativity. Mm, true. And, and in there, I'm reminded of something that Paul shares in the chapter 27 of, of Acts. He was on his way to Rome, and they were facing the big storm. Mm. And he says, so keep up your courage, men, for I have faith in God that it will happen just as he told me. You know, are you going to choose to say, I believe God's going to do what he said he's going to do? That's good. If you do, it enables you to have a more thankful heart, doesn't it? So my encouragement to you is to think thoughts of thankfulness, even when it's not easy. Listen to God's voice. Seek after God's voice. And don't focus on your own fears. Have a blessed day.